Well, as I said, um, the new Minister of Police promised to come back and talk to us when he'd had a few weeks to knock some heads, take some names, maybe throw some people in jail. And true to his word, we are joined now by the Minister of Police, uh, Chris Hipkins, who celebrated his birthday on Monday. How old were you, Minister? I was 44, Sean, 44. Still a spring check, really. Really? <laughs> well, you know, I'm not. I'm not quite as. I'm not quite as cynical yet, uh, Sean. I've got a wee way to go, but I'm, I'm trying to catch up. All right. I imagine uh, a few weeks in the police portfolio ages you quite quickly. Yeah. Well, that, that has its upside, <laughs> but but yeah, that's a it's a challenging job. There's mm. no question about that. I got the feeling when we first interviewed you that you were really at a stage where I, I need to scope this. I need to see what's happening. But clearly there were some issues, some uh, some serious issues, certainly in perception and public perception of, of law and order in this country that were causing concern. Ram raids, gang shootings and seemingly a rise I I in youth crime. Can you say since your appointment there's, that much has changed in that regard? No, not much, not a lot has changed. I mean, I've got a better understanding, I guess, of some of those issues and, and, the, and the causes and, and the potential solutions to them. There's no question. We've seen an escalation in gang-related activity. We've seen an escalation, particularly in the upper half of the North Island, um, of uh, some more serious offending by young people. Um, those are things that we absolutely uh, need to take seriously. You know, some of the solutions are more complicated than, uh, than you know, perhaps makes for good politics. Um, but there's no question we've got to do more in both of those areas to really kind of bring that back under control. All right, you've had a bit of a war of words with Mark Mitchell, who we've had here on the platform, who's saying that gangs are driving a lot of this youth offending and it is young people being attracted to the gang lifestyle and therefore a lawless lifestyle that's causing the problems. You appeared to poo-poo that idea a, a week or so back. Um, why don't you believe Mark Mitchell when he says this is the path to lawlessness that young people are taking in gang membership? Well, because of the evidence, he's he's, he's basically, um, if you like, misquoting from a, a gang uh, from an intelligence report that the police put together. What the police found was that the majority of these young people are not in, involved or affiliated with a gang and don't have gang links. But further on down the report, they do talk about young people effectively congregating in groups. And I think at one point they used the term gang in a different context. You know, a, a gang of kids being a gang, of, a group of kids that hang out together as opposed to being a member of any kind of structured gang group. Uh, and I think, unfortunately, you know, it was an unfortunately worded uh, worded document. But the over, over, overall, you know, whelming view from the police, or I wouldn't say overwhelming, but the, 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 you know, the, the, the mm. main view from the police is that, that these are not, uh, you know, this is not the mongrel mob or hell's angels or whatever using kids to, to commit offending. All right. Um, also the suggestion from Mark Mitchell that the internet is a place where young people are now posting pictures of their misdemeanours to get sort of kudos or credibility online. Oh, that is absolutely true, um, and and this is one of the big challenges because actually it's almost become the more audacious and outrageous the crime that they're committing, the the more notoriety they get, and therefore the more more reward makes they it feel quite from easy that. to catch them, doesn't it? Well, well certainly it's a, it's a great intelligence tool for police, but the problem is the consequences that flow from that uh, tend to actually reinforce the behaviour rather than uh, rather than stop it. So, you know, being sent to juvie, for example, is something that these kids are wearing with a, as a badge of honour. It's kind of like, oh, you haven't really arrived until you've spent a time locked up in juvie. Um, and so, you know, the, some of the rhetoric around, well, let, let's, let's lock these kids up. Actually, some of them are asking for that. Some of them want that. And ultimately what happens is that they then come out the other side of that, more hardened criminals than they went into it. And so, uh, you know, we've got to break that cycle. We've got to get these kids back on the straight and narrow. You know, some of these kids are very young. We've had kids, you know, e even before their teens, you know, you know, 8, 9, 10, 11-year-olds um, being sucked into some of this. That, that's just a tragedy. Yeah. Minister, what you're saying is that four, five, six weeks since our last interview, not a lot has changed. 
Well, we've, we've just launched yesterday, you know, the program which is around better pathways around getting these kids more constructively engaged, trying to hook them back off the pathway towards criminal offending and get them into something positive. We've got a range of programs there that we know work, so we're scaling them up, we're putting more resource into them so that we can, hit, you know, reach those young people more. There will be more that police need to do. You know, police have, uh, probably one thing that has changed since we last spoke is that a heck of a lot more of these young people have been identified and arrested um, because police are following up on every one of these events. When we look at this problem, though, there is no one easy hit, and lock them up, throw away the key, clearly isn't a response that is going to have any long-term benefit. We were talking yesterday, I think, on the programme to Pat Newman, uh, Principals, Principals Association uh, Tita Taukarao, who were talking about their huge issue up north uh, with truancy and how they've taken a completely different non-punitive approach to truants and they're using kids who are at school to run campaigns saying, hey, it's really neat at school. Do you know what you're missing out on? Which seems to me to flip the old child catcher truant officer thing on its head somewhat. When we talk about uh, solving particularly the issue of youth crime, do we have to go that far back from the cliff to really find, find the problem and the root cause of this? No, and actually I strongly endorse that approach that Pat Newman has been taking. Uh, he's got my full support on that. And actually we've, we've launched, you know, through centrally across the country, a campaign about everyday mattering. You know, every day that, that kids are at school matters. You know, they, they are learning every day. A kid missing one week of school per term across their life will miss over a year's worth of learning. So it, it all adds up and it all matters. You know, every day matters. Parent, the message to parents has to be your kids should be at school unless they've got a really good reason not to be. So if they're sick, yeah, sure, keep them home. But otherwise, take them, you know, they've got to be at school. Uh, the fact that you've got some family gathering, that's not a good excuse. You know, the fact that you're going on holiday, that's not a good excuse. That's what school holidays are for. Get your kids to school. Everyone needs to hear that message loudly and clearly. Yeah. Uh, in terms of, you know, th th can we do it more positively? Yes, absolutely we can. But we also, and again, you know, we do need to be proactive in following up on those families whose kids aren't regularly attending school to make sure we're identifying why that is and to make sure we're getting those kids back in the classroom. And for all those re reasonable positions, we still get outrage when a young offender sexually assaults a number of young women and violates another and gets what many consider a slap over the back of the hand with a wet bus ticket, Minister. Uh, look, I think there's, there's, you know, as a parent, I can tell you I have a view on that as well. Um, I, I'll, well what's I'll your view as a parent? The, tell us what that view is. Well, well look, I'll respect the, the, the long-held separation between the, you know, the legislature and the, um, and the judiciary. judiciary well, well, I think I'm going to give you permission to speak as a human being separate from your portfolio. Oh, look, as a parent, I'd be devastated if that happened to one of my children. Um, and, you know, I would I would want there to be consequences that were in line with that, that level of devastation. Ultimately, though, um, I'm not a judge. I'm not the one who makes sentencing decisions. All right. All right. Um, what about the meth issue? And I see the Helen Clark Foundation, partially funded by this government, has come out and said we need to decriminalise um, possession of small amounts of meth to encourage uh, meth users to seek help a a a and rehabilitation. What's your view as Police Minister on that suggestion? I uh, don't necessarily support decriminalising possession of small amounts, but I certainly agree with the overall thrust that we need to do more to support people into rehab. Uh, and actually, you know, the evidence that I've had from police or the conversations I've had with police suggest that they're pretty pragmatic um, about, you know, if, 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 if they're finding ways to support people into rehab is the first you know, line of of, mm. um, of attack to the problem, then they do. You know, the, the police do actually want to see people getting out of using drugs um, and if they can support them and help them to do that, then, the, you know, what the conversations I've had with them suggest that that's exactly what they're doing. All right. Minister, can you say since taking over in this portfolio that we have had a discern, discernible, on the data available, reduction in the number of RAM rates? Oh, no, not at all. No? Uh, no reduction in the number of, of gang, or, or reduction in gang tension? Uh, well, the jury's still out on that one at this point. Okay, so that's um, a uh, no, that's a no. A reduction in general in lawlessness or criminal activity in the country? 
Well, in, in the case of a couple of months, no, you're not going to see significant right. change. So, in at the reports. moment, at the moment, if we were writing a report card for Chris Hipkins, Minister of Police, it's going to say, and I'll put this in a nice way, must try harder. I was, hopefully, I hopefully would say off to a good start. Yeah, but if a good start isn't any change in anything, how can that be a good start? Well, well you know, if a kid starts... You've turned up for class, Minister. The, You've turned up for class. Not they're not going to learn to read on the first day, Sean. Uh, the, the, the issue is, you know, are, are, they, are they settling in and are they getting underway? And I hope that that's what I'm doing. All right. Look, as I have you here and as we talked to Winston Peters this morning, but it was not the brief for this interview, and I, I am someone who doesn't like um, ambushing people, and you haven't got the Prime Minister to tell me that it's my last question, are you prepared <laughs> to talk about the RV Yemeni issue? which Mr Peters suggested you should have been aware of under the no surprises policy. Look, I can say that I wasn't made aware of it under the no surprises policy. Um, you know, as I said to you the other day, Sean, it's not something, you know, the police's intelligence gathering exercises, uh, particularly where they're doing that in liaison with a, with a different arm of government, immigration, that's not something that I would expect to be briefed on. OK, but Avi Yemeni, for whatever reason, is someone who attracts headlines and people are interested in the Herald. Mainstream media were certainly uh, interested in him. We are told by the Herald that there is a police investigation into the leak of a memo in relation to this, which I would think is something that the Minister of Police would be interested in. And the chain of events, as best we, as we can establish them here at the platform, is that someone in the police made a decision that they did not want these two Australians here. And I'm just trying to clarify if that is the job of the police, if they have a statutory right or ability as police to decide who they want or don't want in New Zealand and then to take proactive steps to try and keep them out. Yeah, look, and I have no, no, um, no issue with those questions being asked. I don't have any information to be able to answer those questions at this point. Um, but, you know, the police are looking at the matter. Um, and I do expect that in the fullness of time, once they've had a chance to identify what happened and how it happened and all that, that we will get answers to some of those questions. Are you but expecting I, I a report from the police commissioner on this issue on your desk at some stage in the future? Well, there are relevant agencies who can investigate, including the um, the IPCA, for example, if there's any suggestion that police haven't upheld... I'm not asking you know, in, in the hypothetical. You just said you're expecting to hear back. From whom and in what context? Um, in the fullness of time, I am expecting to get a bit more information from police to at least provide reassurance that nothing untoward has happened. Would you agree that on the face of it, Hypothetically speaking, if New Zealand police were able to target individuals according to some flaw in their political thought, uh, target them from exclusion from New Zealand, that might raise serious questions and serious concerns uh, look, I... about the openness, tolerance and impartiality of our police force and indeed some of the, you know, the principles of our democracy. Oh, look, I, I don't deal with hypotheticals, Sean, um, but I, I, I do think that you know, there, are, there are protocols and guidelines around exactly how police should operate in these sorts of circumstances. I think you yourself have quoted them. Um, and I think they're good protocols and guidelines. Are you concerned that they may have been breached? Uh, like I said, I'm not going to pass judgment on something that I don't have information about. Um, so uh, in the fullness of time, um, if there's a need to make a comment on that, um, you know, one way or the other... But you cannot yes, tell me for sure that you are investigating this or anyone in police are really doing anything about it. Uh, well, it's not my job um, as Minister of Police to, uh, to confirm or deny what police may or may not be investigating. That, and that would be an inappropriate... Well, no, 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 this isn't about a criminal investigation, Minister. This is about an administrative matter that I think does fall in your purview. Well, again, when police are doing reviews of, of how they've handled a, a case or how they've handled a situation, again, that is an operational matter for the police. But if something untoward has happened, yeah. uh, then I would certainly... Do you expect, expect be, uh, no as Minister, on. would you expect or are you expecting police to create, uh, to conduct a review of this matter? Uh, if there is any suggestion that something untoward has happened... Well, there is. Yes, there clearly is a suggestion something untoward's happened. Well, well, then, you know, stand by what I just said. 
Okay, we look forward uh, to that uh, to that response. Uh, meantime, do you have any other major policy announcements, changes in practice to address uh, what you've already admitted today are the ongoing issues we've got uh, in the crime space? Oh, absolutely. Look, it'll be a rolling program of work. We, you'll see that we've announced a package around gangs and around yep. how we're targeting uh, gangs. We've announced a package around youth offenders. Both of those are, are building blocks, so there will be more to follow in, in both of them. You know, I imagine that this is going to be an ongoing program of work and there will certainly be more to come. Yeah, and Minister, clearly in the run-up to the election, uh, law and order, it's an easy one for opposition to get into. This isn't going away till, till polling day, is it? Well, it's an easy one for opposition to get into, but actually the solutions are, are the most important thing. And, and the rhetoric is easy. Get tough on crime. Yeah, that's easy rhetoric, and everyone knows the rhetoric. Mm. But in the long term, it doesn't actually necessarily change the situation. If you talk about getting tough on youth crime, for example, what we know is that many of the get tough on youth crime solutions take them from being minor youth offenders and turns them into more serious, hardened gang members. Um, and so, you know, we, we've got to be a bit careful there to make sure that what we're doing is actually solving the problem. It's not just making it worse. Yeah. Uh, Minister, I thank you very much indeed for the return uh, interview. We must do this again soon. Uh, and thank you for getting back to us. No problem. Thanks, Sean. Cheers. That is Chris Hipkins, the Minister of Police. Tough job. And uh, I think he's been pretty honest in his assessment of progress to date. And uh, that's all we can ask for, is honest answers to straight questions, isn't it? That, that's just part of the job.